And this is the 15th season of the River Conscious series. And it's, uh, for me, really, it's thrilling when we get to look at some of the artists and, the, some, and many of the programs that we're able to do. We're expecting and producing a, a beautiful season uh, starting June 20th and running through all the Friday nights till July 25th, I think. And uh, we're starting off, the first program is, uh, is one of those programs that have been very popular with our audiences which shows off uh, some classical music, in this case Baroque, like music of Bach and Handel. In fact, we're going to do a couple of the Bach Brandenburgs, so very serious classical in the first part. And then we're going to take a look at that same type of Baroque music, but with a very a fine jazz trio playing with us while we're playing the Baroque. So it tries to show that Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach, was probably the first jazz swinger back in the uh, uh, late 1600s, early 1700s. So you'll get to hear Baroque as it was expected to be played and Baroque with a jazz feel in that first concert. So we're excited about that. And on the second concert, uh, we're going to play some music by Haydn. It's called the Symphony Number. No. 85, which is from his Paris symphonies, and it, uh, this one was written for the Queen of France. Uh, you know that uh, Jefferson uh, was, of course, a Secretary of State, Thomas Jefferson, to uh, France, and uh, we were invited down to Monticello uh, uh, to be an orchestra in residence at Monticello in Virginia at the uh, Jefferson home, and this will probably be one of our first programs in Monticello too. So it's The Queen of France by Haydn and uh, also uh, Schubert's Fifth Symphony that we're going to play. And I think we're going to have a Mozart concerto uh, soloist still to be determined at this moment who will be playing that Mozart. So kind of a classical program with a little bit of, uh, you know, Jeffersonian revolutionary period music at that point. Uh, the third concert is our July 4th concert, and we're looking for uh, this time to change it a little bit. It'll be a jazzy kind of fourth, and I think that people might expect to hear uh, Moonlight Serenade uh, as the fireworks take off, you know. Well, the fireworks go off, so we'll have kind of like a 1940s feel fireworks show instead of our usual 1812 Overture of the Tchaikovsky, so a little twist on that. Uh, fourth concert, uh, Larry Vogt, who's the director of the choirs here at St. Mary's College. He's going to do a big Italian uh, choir and orchestra evening with some music by, uh, also by Johann Strauss Jr. and Verdi, and a real fun thing. And we've, over the last couple of seasons, we've developed a, a River Concert Series choir, too, that comes from uh, the singers of our community, and so they'll join in with, uh, I think it's La Traviata's Drinking Song and uh, uh, Nabucco, the choir of the, the chorus of the Hebrews from Nabucco, so that'll be fun. Uh, fifth concert, we're going to feature Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony, the Patetique, and we're going to feature also uh, a wonderful Belgian pianist named Patrick Dürer, who will be playing at Carnegie Hall, I think, two days before he comes down and visits us uh, to do Franck variations for uh, piano and orchestra. And then we have an exciting conclusion where uh, the sixth concert will be the famous Rimsky Korsakov Scheherazade, where the story of Scheherazade tells her story to be saved from having her head cut off, and who uh, who would not rather have tell a story than have their head cut off. Um, and, and then we conclude with, on that same program, the great Maureen McGovern in her orchestral show with us, and she has been touring the country with, with various symphonies, the major symphonies, and, and she, uh, of course, she was very famous for her hit, There's Got to Be a Morning Af After. There's got to be a morning after, da da da, that was from the Poseidon Adventure. But uh, she has a new album of uh, great, uh, classic standards and uh, I think some James Taylor too and it sounds fantastic and so we're going to do that with her so that's another one of our you know kind of stars brought to St. Mary's County on behalf of the Chesby Orchestra and the River Concert Series. You know we've had so many different types of programs so many different types of experiences there was uh, that 
that funny piece that we used to do as a signature piece with the fire department called Hose Down. And we had the fire trucks come up right close to the tent and they would integrate their sirens into the orchestra burning out of control. When we did a western program with Susie Boggess and we came on stage with the horses and our concert master uh, Jose Cueto was on a mule that almost bucked him off the horse just before he got to the stage. Uh, uh, of course, no, no recounting of the River Series would be complete without remembering the Brazilian dancers. Uh, and then we've had such an important list of violinists and pianists, Laura St. John and uh, of course Jose Cueto and Kiko Myers I mentioned before. But, uh, the pianist John Nakamatsu, who won the gold prize at the Van Cliburn competition, our own Brian Gantz, uh, Sean Terrell, Leon Bates, so many people that uh, are really now the real headliners uh, in all the big cities. So we were, in, in many times, we were able to uh, create something that, that some of these artists, like Hillary Cole, or even Kate Baldwin had not been doing yet singing with symphonies. So they came to us and we, we put together their program and we worked, we woodshedded it, and then they uh, took that program, went off to play with other orchestras. Over the 15 years of the River Series and the 20 years uh, that the Chesapeake Orchestra existed, I think little by little people probably uh, lost track of my, of my performance as a trumpeter because I was so emphasizing, underscoring for the community my role as a conductor and a music director. But uh, my first job out of, out of the conservatory was the first trumpeter of the Jerusalem Symphony and then later I went off to uh, perform with the Italian National Symphony Radio Intelligence of Italy and I have uh, about 10 recordings uh, with the London Symphony and the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic, uh, the Seattle Symphony. And so, uh, and my, my trumpet identity has been very much sustained, but especially in Europe. Uh, I go several times a year to perform as a trump player and conductor, but as a trump player in Europe. And uh, recently uh, was soloing in Prague. So I thought that it would be fun this time to start off the series with uh, an appearance as a trumpet soloist as well this time. And so uh, in that same show which is going to show Baroque music and Baroque jazz. Uh, I'm going to play first uh, a Tartini concerto for piccolo trumpet. Uh, this piece was originally written for violin and then uh, arranged by the famous trumpeter Maurice André, the famous French trump player. And so this is one of his signature concertos. So uh, I, uh, I brought along my trumpets and I'll, you'll get to hear at least the cadenza uh, from the second movement of that Tartini concerto. And uh, the next piece that I'm going to play, we've expanded. Maurice André first with the French pianist Claude Bowling did a, a, a recording called Toot Sweet, T-O-O-T as Toot Sweet. And, uh, and so it's French jazz, but it sounds very Baroque. And what I've done now is taken that piece and I've added strings and I've added a jazz trio and we have some wonderful artists, Victor Dvashkin on bass and Adolf Wright, uh, the uh, famous drummer Adolf Wright played often with uh, Aretha Franklin and Gladys Knight and many of the other uh, artists, uh, pop artists. He's a wonderful drummer and so we're going to fuse the orchestra with uh, this toot suite between jazz and baroque. People will probably recognize this excerpt that I'm going to play now because uh, it's also used by Diane Reams uh, for her opening of her uh, NPR show.
you know, the theme of making music happen is really a, an idea that I started to tell my students first. Because when we were discussing uh, what a musician has to do, you know, if a painter would consider themselves a painter and then not paint, then would they be a painter? So the same with a dancer, an actor, but musicians somehow they feel that if they practice in their practice room until they've achieved a great uh, technical and musical facility that that's the end of the line and someone will find them like you know artists maybe generally actors and musicians especially we we've but we are born to believe about that you get discovered in a drugstore kind of thing, which I think Marilyn Monroe was discovered in a drugstore because she was so beautiful, supposedly, and then that was it. But So I tell my students, you know, a musician or a music student has to perform music, but they have to make the music happen. They've got to create the venue. They've got to create the interest. They've got to find the resources. And so that's kind of become a theme of the River Series and the Chesapeake Orchestra that we're out there trying to make the music happen. I remember the first experience that I had uh, performing with the Chesapeake Orchestra. It was my freshman year in college, actually, um, as a trombone player. And, uh, you know, I was taking lessons with the principal trombone of the Marine Band at that time, um, who also teaches lessons at the St. Mary's College um, for that first year. And I was working as an intern for the summer, um, doing all the production work. And uh, they finally asked me to, if I would like to play and join in with him at this concert. Um, and I was like, yes, of course, you know, I would love to play. Um, and it just so happened they were playing Tchaikovsky's Fourth Symphony. Uh, and uh, at now I would be kind of ashamed to say I didn't really, wasn't really aware of that symphony and how heavy it was on the brass. Um, so I, you know, just listened to it over and over, watched my part, you know, practice as much as I could, you know, because the first time I could, I could get to play with the professional orchestra. And um, so I, I just remember sitting there, you know, it was a hot summer day. As, as all of the concerts are, and um, was just the, the fact of being able to play and sit in with all of the professional musicians and hear that really raw brass sound that you get um, on the Tchaikovsky's Fourth uh, was just amazing. And I, I just always had the picture in my brain you know, of where I was on the stage and all of the surroundings and, and, and the power of, of the music that I could feel. like literally um, going, th going through me. So I, from that experience, it kind of hooked me um, and uh, into, you know, this is, this is the field that I wanted to pursue, whether it be on the production side um, or also the music. It was just, it was a great connection for me and great confirmation um, into where I wanted to take, you know, my career path. Um, and uh, I was just very excited and, and very grateful to have that experience and opportunity um, with the Chesapeake Orchestra. Well, you know, when a person comes to St. Mary's County or Southern Maryland, they wouldn't necessarily imagine right away that Southern Maryland is a kind of a twin relationship with Northern Italy, the famous wine region. But it, it has that. It's had it for a long time. Uh, the Chesapeake Orchestra and River Con Series uh, has been a partner for a very long time of the Alba Music Festival in the Piemonte region of northern Italy. Uh, it's our 11th season there. And we have often brought artists that would not have known about St. Mary's County that started off and saying, you know, we'd like you to come perform with us in Italy. And once they meet us in Italy, they want to come to St. Mary's County. There was a, a connection there was a festival called Spoleto, which was based in Charleston, South Carolina, and also in Spoleto, Italy. And that uh, is a 50 or 60 year old festival. It's had some up and down fortunes over the years. But we have been even referred to an Italian newspaper as the Northern Italian Spoleto. And so it's a big deal, and, and it is part of the, our creative process here in River Series, it starts a little bit, you know, in a different way, like a baseball team, like the Orioles uh, go off to Fort Lauderdale to do their spring training. Well, we always joke that we end, start off in, in Italy 
to get ourselves ready for the River Concert Series. You know, these events are made, they're made for St. Mary's community, for Southern Maryland, and they're sponsored by the, uh, the local corporations who are very generous with us, and we also are sponsored by the community and people, individual community as well. And uh, we're, uh, we make this music for the community and they support us and so uh, we're very grateful and I think it's a you know it's an important synergy for for our region so if you want to see more music you have to come to the series Come see what it's like to get the right deal from the right guys at Toyota of Southern Maryland, the owner-operated dealer serving Lexington Park and all of Southern Maryland for over 15 years. From our award-winning service department to our helpful, knowledgeable sales staff, come see the Toyota of Southern Maryland difference and make your next car buying or servicing experience a great one at Toyota of Southern Maryland, proud sponsor of the Chesapeake Orchestra.